Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Stellaris. We are the Quill Sovereignty, and this is the pre-release build. Things may change by the time you get your hands on uh, Stellaris, of course, but uh, overall, I don't know, pretty good. So, last time we left off, we hadn't picked our research yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So we've got, um, you, you do need a leader to run your research uh, departments. So we have three scientists here. We have Hask Kalas, uh, we have... Hask Gintar, and we have Torba Malas over here. The names are generated um, based on a uh, on a choice that you make when you create your race. So these are all scientists. They can fill any role. You know, they can they can switch roles, but they all have a bit of a specialty as well. Um, Hask Kalas, if he's researching Voidcraft, would actually research 10% faster, and that would be anything with this symbol. You can see the symbol of the technologies over here. So he doesn't have one, so he won't get to take advantage of that, which is too bad. Uh, these other two are both maniacal, which is really nice because it gives you a flat 5% research speed to everything. There's also another leader trait you can get that's quite rare, I think, that just gives you a flat 10% research speed to everything, which is really wonderful. So here we're not gonna we're just gonna get the plus two percent bonus because of our leader's skill level. I think they get two percent per skill. They will gain experience points as time goes on. So it's very tempting to just grab the administrative AI right away for just generally 5% faster research speed for the rest of time. It's a pretty good early investment. Um, that being said, if we did want to build some military ships, we might want better lasers. We currently have red lasers. We could upgrade to blue lasers, which do more damage. Um, and you can see all the stats here. We'll talk about these different sizes later on. Uh, and we might not get this back. But early on, there's not much conflict in the early game, other than maybe with some space monsters or something like that. So I think it's probably a good idea to get the 5% research speed. Um, for society research, as far as I can tell, you always start... Um, you always have the option on the first go in every single one of my games so far to start researching the new worlds protocol right away, which unlocks the ability to get colony ships. So if you really want to rush out a colony ship, uh, you can always start researching it. Now, again, the early game doesn't, you don't necessarily have to rush like crazy in the early game. Um, you could take something else. Now the bio lab is a slightly upgraded science building, which gives us a tiny bit more, um, uh, society research than the base science building. Base science building is 111. This is a 121. So that's not bad. Uh, planetary unification is interesting. The extra monthly influence, which is just automatic as soon as you research this, is actually pretty handy. I found that, like, influence is hard to come by, and there's a few things you want to do with influence, and you're really happy when you've got it. Also unlocks an edict that we can pass uh, propaganda broadcasts, which gives more happiness because everyone thinks everything is awesome. I'm tempted to grab this, but. The, it does take a long time to research the colony ship tech, and in addition to that, uh, there's actually quite a few things that can delay the society research when we meet some aliens. So it might be a good idea to pick it and, and just go for it right away. Let, let's do it. I'm really, I like this planetary unification, but I'm going to go and get the colony ship tech right away. Uh, and then finally, engineering, we've got armor. That's another ship component. Uh, geothermal fracking gives you more mineral storage uh, capacity. Right now, we can only store up to five thousand minerals here. If you don't, you know, then you, if you don't spend it, you lose it. I haven't hit that that cap yet, but I've only ever played very early game. It does unlock a new mining building, an upgraded mining building, which gives three minerals instead of two, and that's pretty tempting. It also uh, gives us the ability to get an engineering facility here, which again is an upgraded version of the science lab, which is a slightly different focus. I think I'm going to take the geothermal fracking because I think getting a mining network two is going to be really helpful for us. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Okay. And so I have to decide now if I'm going to keep building some military ships. I think I'm going to sneak one more out over here. There you go. So it's 52 minutes right now. It's leaving us with 74. Uh, and the magic number early on is 90, which is what you need to build a mining station. And we're going to have that in a couple of months, so that's going to be fine. We still haven't found anywhere for us to do any mining. Our science ship is still going to work. We're still popping some systems out here. So again, uh, Hithrim over here has a continental world, so that's not going to be particularly colonizable. Hopefully we find some more. We've got... Oh! Aliens. An unidentified empire. It's just, just, just on the edge of our sensor range over here. And actually, might be passing through our system. No, just passing by. So we didn't actually have an encounter, but there's stuff out there. All right, our science ship just identified a planet that's got a rich deposit of minerals out there. It is a frozen world that is not habitable at this time. Uh, potentially, that's something that could change later on. But for now, it's not. But there are minerals there. We can use them with our construction ship. I'm going to move it out here. 
by oh actually mining stations are only 81 because oh, i have a discount because of stuff right excellent okay that's great so our construction ship with it selected i just right clicked on this planet and one of the options was build mining station you can see there's a few other options over here terraforming station terraform this planet to other stuff that's cool observation post that's for um if we find some primitives on the planet and frontier outpost which uh, you build around stars and lets you claim a system for your empire without actually building a colony there which is quite useful but what we want to do here is we want to build a mining station it does cost us 81 minerals now but it will give us an extra two minerals per month for the rest of the game so you know it will take a while to pay for itself but not that long and we do need to build up our our mineral income quite uh quite aggressively here we definitely will need a bigger bank of that stuff and so i prioritize getting more minerals early on each one of these stations does i believe cost one energy per month to maintain i'm not actually sure if that's entirely true i don't think it's one per month now it didn't tell me in the pop-up maybe it'll tell me down here oh no monthly maintenance one credit per month so you also need credits to maintain all these things but sometimes you get the ability to um uh, to build a mining station around somewhere that gives you energy. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if we found some of that in our home world over here. So that's the one thing that your survey ships are there for, is to find those resources. Yes, thank you, we finished the ship. I like how it bloops on the map, very nice. Um, but we're also hoping to find some anomalies that we can research and get some extra science. Hostile now, fleet detected. okay, our first hostile fleet was detected. It's going to, it's right here. It's actually hostile. Uh, but it's going to someone else's system. It's not one of mine. This strength, the fleet has a strength of 150. You can see my fleets have a strength of about 70 and 45, so we'd be weaker than this even if we put everything together. So hopefully no combat. But, uh, yeah, we got that. That's unidentified. Now, we still haven't gotten... They haven't visited our system yet, so we haven't actually labeled these aliens as anything quite yet. Now, most likely, these are just various space monsters. They're almost certainly not another alien empire. We finished the surface construction queue, so let's go ahead and take a look at our situation here so right i built that little mining base over here which is actually giving us wow yeah right flat because we get a 25 percent bonus between the happy and industrious so we're getting a whole extra mineral here that's really 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 good that's really good so our mineral output's gone up um i think i might build another mineral farm over here actually mineral mine i should say um oh and there's my little ghostly people as they're growing over here so this is when the next pop will arrive so oh i don't have the i don't have the minerals for it so never mind but i think another mineral mine would be a good idea oh we found this moon over here has another couple of minerals there great so maybe i'll just spend my minerals building this then that'll be fine unidentified unidentified and our vessel's still going there so we have a second fleet that we're sort of building up and i think i'm going to stop the ship production now because i'm going to save my minerals for more of the mining bases but at being slightly above 100 force with five corvettes that's not bad if we get some military technology we might buff it up a little bit more than that and depending on what we face we might want just a couple more okay so in the mezcal system we have found a hostile fleet presumably oh just a bit of a hint maybe it, it might have uh, been there for a second and then taken off but we got enough of an up close encounter not just on long range sensors but actually found them in a system that we have finally encountered fellow wanderers among the stars. Despite their intentions being unknown and potentially even hostile, the atmosphere on Sudbari, following the report from our contact fleet, can at best be described as rapturous. And that's because we are xenophiles. If you play as xenophobes, you will get a pretty different description of your population's reaction to finding out that there are other uh, aliens out there. And then it describes that there was an encounter over here, and we've just flagged these aliens as alpha aliens. Also, if you're a xenophile, that we'll call them alpha menaces, which I love. It's all these little things. So, this has created a new special project for us. Oh, there we go. Now we actually have view over the system, and we can see it. They have a military strength of 178, and it looks like they are moving to engage. Yeah, they're attacking my first vanguard. Luckily, we are just going to warm hole out, and we'll be out of there in time. So, we have a special project here to investigate the Alpha Aliens. It takes 180 days, and during that time, it will stall my society research. As far as I can tell, it doesn't matter what your research rate is. This is just a fixed time. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to take six months, and for six months, our society research is going to be put on hold. And we can see that uh, right over here. There's no progress bar because it's busy investigating these Alpha Aliens. And we got another encounter. We've got some Beta Aliens in Oshamir over here now ah okay hopefully we'll get out of there and we should be fine although we could i was gonna say we're gonna engage here and our science ships encountered some alien vessels in sudbury 
What the heck's going on? This is, uh... This is quite a bit more scary here. Alright, Gamma Aliens. Okay, let me stay paused a second here. Let me check out Sudbury. There is a hostile fleet. Now, they may not move in, but our Constructor Ship and Science Ship are both moving to the protection of my Starbase here, which is a pretty good strength. Meanwhile, the first Vanguard over here has been engaged by what I know are these Crystalline Aliens, because A, you can see them, and B, I know that that strength is a particular type of alien over there. Um, and because they were set to pass that they have engaged, I will want to retreat here, because obviously we don't have the forces. Um, and in fact, in the future, I might go and put this fleet to defensive. The other thing I could do is I could move the second battle group into here. But I don't think I will. So I'm just going to wait until we can emergency FTL out of here. So we're going to exchange a little bit of fire. We've taken some scratches on our Corvette here. Yeah, we're going to try to retreat. With the FTL, the emergency FTL. It's a lot faster. And we are back in the system of Sudbury. And what we can do is we can issue this command to return to the nearest starbase. Or very conveniently, we can say repair fleet, which will do the same thing. Return to the closest place in which you can replay, repair. Look at this. We're down. We lost almost 40% of our total hit points here. Luckily, it was spread across all three ships in this particular encounter. Um, and therefore, didn't lose any. Sometimes there's more focus fire. Sometimes there's less. So we're going to combine over there. We still have the these aliens here. Most likely... Yeah, they have warped in. They use warp engines here. They're waiting for their warp wind down, and then they'll probably warp away again. Yeah, they're not sticking around. These are probably much more passive aliens, and certainly had no desire to attack us over there. So now that they're gone, I'm going to tell my science ship to resume its um, system survey. And my construction ship, which I, I believe did finish that. Yeah, it did. So you can go over here, and... Oop, not the wormhole station. Right there. Build me another mining station. That's going to be okay. Well, that was exciting. We are in a bit of a hairy area. So you can see the exclamation marks stay. These are our systems where we knew there were aliens there. So we can keep track of that. No, to probably avoid them with our uh, civilian ships. This is a tundra world, though. This is going to be a really important one for us to clear out because this is one that we can colonize. A continental world, less important. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to go there with an actual battle fleet and clear that out at some point, but there's currently no real rush. Um, my two fleets are currently in orbit over here. If I just select them both, I can merge them right over here. G hotkey, same as EU4. They will just combine into a single fleet. And yeah, just continue to just be repairing. You can see the little hit points going up as they get repaired by the starbase over here. So we're at 116 now. We could probably take one of those crystalline uh, armies, um, or, you know, enemies out there, but... I, I, I think I prefer a slightly more decisive force. So, what do we need to build the Corvette? 52. Now, we haven't gotten any technology to improve it yet. And we still won't, actually. So, I guess if we're going to go, we're going to go with what we've got. But we do need 52 min uh, minerals to be able to build more Corvettes. So, I think maybe another couple. And then maybe we could go and attempt that. We'll see. The other thing I can do, since we're repaired... Tell you what, I'm actually going to set this fleet to be evasive. And I will just go and bop through the other systems here with the ones with no name. And we'll just uncover them. Ah, excellent. We're going to talk about our science officers soon, which we haven't done yet. So your scientists, not only do you um, assign them to research in the three categories, but your scientists are also the ones who go around on your science ships. So if we look at our science ship over here, we've got a scientist, Hask and deck over here he just made it to level two and his special ability is 25 extra years of lifespan which is quite nice because it means when he does get to high level he's not going to keel over from old age okay so one of the groups of aliens we just finished researching we've identified as being void clouds this is another one that is radically different if you are um if you are spiritualist uh, which is what I was getting in my my little cat people test run. The flavor text for this event is wickedly different, and in fact, I think leads you in a completely different direction. So, an investigation into a particular or peculiar cluster of debris and space dust has yielded surprising results. It is a particulate cloud bristling with a powerful charge of unknown origin that has no business exhibiting simple reflexive action, let alone movement with purpose, and yet it does. There's something undeniably ominous about the hazy subject of the relayed video feeds. Perhaps there are things in the universe we should not tangle with. Let us watch, but not interfere with. So it's going to create another special project for Void Cloud Situation Investigation. Um, but I'm going to, I think, oh, 
And this is actually physics, so I can do this while I also do a societal project to investigate these beta aliens over here. Excellent. So we're going to do that. And yeah, like it does, there is a very different experience depending on your picks. They did a really good job with some of these events and decisions. Okay, one of the things, and this is where the advantage of the detailed map mode comes in. So there you go. Yeah, I don't know why it was showing us the warp range. Oh, probably because I had a fleet selected before. Ah, I see. So this is the normal map mode, which just shows you your current system, your colored borders, and what you're currently mining here for mining stations. We have two mining stations each doing two minerals, which is why it says mineral four. But if we turn this on, first it shows you all the planets that are potentially habitable, which is really useful. Additionally to that, any planet system you've surveyed, it shows you everything that has been surveyed on that planet, including the ones you haven't hooked up yet. We have a three energy source in Sudbari that's not hooked up because it's in white, not in green. And we'll, that'll become really obvious as we continue to expand outwards. With the warp, um, sorry, with the wormhole tech, because you start off with so many planets in range, you may very well want to build a second science ship. I think I'm going to hold off this time. I've been doing that lately. I'm going to hold off this time because what I really want to do is get all my XP on one person. And it, it turns out I don't think the rush is quite as critical. Anyway, our construction ship over here, um, we could, even by clicking on the star, we could ask it to build all the mining stations. Cannot? Why not? Where's the energy? Yeah, I should have been able to. That was weird. Oh, it's on the gas giant. Yeah, build mining station. How come? And there we go. That was weird. So, we can click on the star and get it done. Either way, there's like all kinds of different ways to issue these commands, which I like. And we are going to hook that up. Currently, we're actually running out of money. We are losing almost a full credit per month right now. So building that is going to be quite handy. We can also improve on uh, Sudbari, I believe. We have a couple of tiles that are just energy. Well, this one's already been developed as this one as well. We might want to go and clear the slums from over here, which does cost some energy and some minerals, but we'll open up a two energy credit tile, which we can then work to keep our finances up. Uh, but I don't know if we have to rush to that. I think we're going to be fine, especially once I hook this up. We're going to be in perfectly fine shape. So how's our fleet doing? Still bipping around over here. What is this continental world, which is no good. Uh, Arctic, arid, not particularly good for us. And so, again, once we survey this, these worlds will be color coded based on um, how appropriate Special they are. Project. Complete. Ah, void unclouded. Void clouds are, as far as the Telquillian researchers can tell, among the oldest entities in the universe. They seem to have originated just a scant few billion years after matter as we know it first appeared. The tremendous forces of the young cosmos making something out of nothing. They would have been stars once, but were not. Explaining their apparent animal intelligence is more difficult, but the answer might lie in the abnormally strong electromagnetic fields that keep them together. Another product of their primordial beginnings. It is not inconceivable that, given enough time, the circulation of its strange stardust and gravitic fields align in a flexible approximation of neural pathways. Moreover, the clouds seem to be receiving impulses from one another, if not outright communicating. Light years apart. Quantum entanglement is suspected to play a role in this phenomenon. So we've got two options. They will not stand in our way. This will instantly give us 60 physics research, which is um, which is a year worth of research. That's not bad. And also, we're going to get the Cloud Buster modifier, which gives all of our ships, as far as I know, permanently and automatically for the rest of the game, 10% bonus damage versus Void Clouds. Okay, that's one option. The idea is we're going to go up and blow them up. Or, I can say, hey, can these impulses be traced? This will add a list of systems to our situation log where we could potentially trace more of these Void Clouds, and it may continue certain plot lines. Uh, I kind of like the second one, but because we are using wormholes and it's very possible that um, these systems will lie outside of our range right now and not really be feasible, I'm going to take they will not stand in our way. It's not a particularly nice option, but I'll like the physics boost and yeah, it'll let us clear them out because clearly they're in some of these systems had the void clouds and we're going to need to clear them out at some point. So we'll go ahead and take the extra muscle. We haven't assigned a, um, a fleet leader over here. And we'd probably want to do that. I guess I'll wait until I actually get in combat because I, I don't want to spend 50 influence points and just have one of those leaders die. That would be annoying. So wait a little bit longer. We've got uh, some resources. We could build something else on the planet. Uh, we haven't finished surveying our home system yet. So we might there might be some other stuff that we want to build a mining colony for. But again, each one costs a credit. It adds up really quite fast. The same thing happens on the ground. So actually... 
You know what? I'm going to clear out these spawn, these uh, sprawling slums over here. And then we'll be able to build another power plant over there. And I think that's actually going to be a really good idea. <laughs> so the start of the game is a bit slow-paced. You can improve the speed. Delta aliens. God, we are meeting a million billion aliens. Because, um... Hey, these guys are always already away. Excellent. And we're still finding more systems. And there's still people buzzing around. We're investigating the beta aliens. We'll go through the whole list. So by doing this, I am delaying the colonization tech. But that's okay, because we've got work to do before we colonize. Colonies take eight credits per month to maintain. So you you don't really want to rush colonists until you've got a basic economy set up. Oh, we actually did in Sudbury find some extra... Uh, right over here, another energy mining station spot. So that's actually going to be quite good for our wealth. A little lighter on the minerals, but not too bad. So this is where the beta aliens, where the crystalline entities... I know, I just started this one. It just hadn't popped up from finishing the beta ones. So the crystalline entities. Reports of extraordinary free-floating crystal-like objects observed in certain systems have been investigated. The ship-sized objects, and they're slightly smaller, but equally crystal-like satellites, at first appeared inert. But sudden shifts in their orientation relative to the ships and new energy signatures emerging from within the prisms indicate they might be alive. A fascinating prospect, to be sure, but they should be approached with caution. Our best and brightest are standing by to study these entities. So this will start a new special Situation project. Which is a physics one, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do that side by side with the others, and we'll find out about the crystal entities. And what's great is, um, next time we enter these systems, these little uh, exclamation marks will actually be updated to the correct alien type, so we'll be able to plan things. Crystal entities, well, this is going to be the crystal entity system, just because they tend to go in, in these trios. I know they have a strength of about 105. Uh, this one, I assume, is probably the Void Cloud, and I don't know how strong it was. Maybe it's the 150s that are buzzing around? That's possible. Construction complete. So what was that? Oh, Sudbury finished its queue, which was clearing this out. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to build. These exclamation marks tell you that it um, will lead you to negative income. Or we already have negative income, so you can't really pay for this. So, I mean, you still can, but just be warned. But we're going to take the power plant, build it there. And I'm actually going to tell my... Uh, this new population that's growing, you're going to be working this tile. There we go. They're pretty smart about assigning themselves, but I'm just going to make sure. Uh, we finished that construction. Excellent. And I'm just going to move to this um, this planet preemptively. Uh, but I have to wait until we've got enough uh, minerals to build this mining station. But we are now, once again, positive income. So there we go. It's not. I don't find it too hard to maintain positive income. We really don't have to work it. Ah, okay. So we got a new quest, basically. Habitable world, Habitable world Survey. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Sudbari. Both, of the scientific, both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus on our, our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. So we can tell them, no, we don't care, but we may as well do commendable initiative, which situation will give us a new entry in our um, situation log here to just survey eight habitable planets, which is what's going to happen. We met some um, Epsilon aliens, and, oh, there's some combat here. Special project complete. What, what is this? Who's fighting? Also, how are these guys losing? They just um, definitely seem to be at lower hit points. I'm going to switch you to passive and have you stick around. So, the crystalline entities are unbreakable. This is the, the, the result of our, our research. Crystalline entities, the name itself a compromise between arrival factions of xenobiologists and xenogeologists on Sudbury, are most definitely alive. Some overly conservative members of the the Quillian ac academic elite argue that they are silicate animate matter and that they have little in common with bio biological life. Again, the description of this is completely different depending on your particular um, government setup. <clears throat> The vast majority of the Quill Sovereignty's population reject that regressive perspective, instead turning their eyes towards the fascinating new horizons that the crystalline entities represent. They are, somewhat regrettably, solitary beings, with each individual crystal sovereign rarely, rarely seen with more than one sentinel and a smaller cohort entity. Aside from the cohort and sentinel clearly being subservient to the so sovereign in the group, the subtle nuances of the crystalline entity's socio-hierarchical relationships are lost on us, which does not stop these dynamics from being the subject of fevered study on Sudbari. 
The entities do not seem to mate, and we have yet to observe any crystals that are recognizably older or younger than others. Contrary to an early hypothesis, the shifts in hues between individual crystalline entities seems to be related not to their age, but to their latent internal charge, which can be violently unleashed, and it appears as though sporadic fluctuations in this charge alter the refractive properties of the crystal. So, we have two options. Because we are um, pacifist and xenophiles, we can say this knowledge will surely, certainly, surely be a great boon to the sciences. This would give the prismatic lenses modifier to my whole empire, giving me a permanent plus 10 boost to my physics research. That's pretty good. Or we can say, find some practical use for this information. It will add the crystal sonar modifier to my empire, which lets me spend 30 energy to instantly survey any crystalline entity system when entered. That's quite interesting. So we enter a system that's got these crystals. I guess we just hit a button, spend 30 energy, and it's instantly surveyed. There's a lot of value to that, but I, can't, I don't see how we can resist a 10% boost to our physics research for presumably the rest of the game. There it is over here. So we got our Cloud Buster, we've got our Prismatic Lens. So I was planning on sticking around system with these, this fleet here. Oh, Sudbury's been fully surveyed. I was thinking about sticking around with this fleet here and maybe attacking whoever's left over here. Oh, these are not crystals. Whatever the hell this is. Oh, and those are the space cows. Um, Alright, we're going to go and just return to our little initial little scouting stuff. Actually, I'll just set you to passive. That's fine. And just pop all the systems with no name. All right, so our science ship is completely done surveying everything in our home world. So now we're going to send them to another system to do a full survey and find out what's there. There's actually a Tundra world here, which is our kind of world. So I think it makes sense to get started on that. We're just going to tell it to survey the entire system. You really want to focus on, even if there's habitable worlds over here, early on you probably want to focus on scanning the systems within your actual colored border because those are the only places where you can build mining stations and early on getting those mining stations up and running tends to be a bit of a priority so our construction ship is still just moving i think it's moving to that other energy source which actually i can explicitly tell you hey you can build a mining station on that so then we'll be ruling in energy and then what we'll be looking for again is mostly more minerals because we'll have enough energy to pay for more mining stations and we really want to mine minerals as opposed to mining energy although it would be nice to find some research station spots as well all right well this seems like a great place to put in a bit of a cut we're starting to get a bit of a sense of our neighborhood we certainly have a few um hostile alien monsters around no empires yet of course we'd be very unlikely to have run into someone quite this early uh we're still researching that yeah and we haven't popped the planets over here like just taking a peek with the military force is good because it lets us know if there's hostile aliens or habitable yeah, planets but we have to survey everything we met zeta aliens now quite a lot of different aliens oh this place has a mining base and a military fleet that's moving out. Uh, I'm going to explicitly... Well, we technically have slightly more strength than them. We could consider fighting this. Which is what would happen right now, because we're passive. As soon as they close, we're going to engage. Well, let's make sure to assign a leader. So what do we have? Ship upkeep reduction, sensor range, ship upkeep... Really? Those are our choices? Hang on. If I recruit, do I get a different pool? Ugh, same things right now. That's terrible. Well, technically, we'll have someone. He's got a one star, so he'll have a 5% boost to fire rate. He has a built-in ship upkeep reduction that also stacks with that. Hmm. Well, I guess we're going to put a cut in here, and we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye-bye.